Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the features of the Geometric Hierarchy Tracker in a little more detail, even though we're still not going to have a hierarchy in this shot. So the footage here is a 4K resolution shot from a GH4. So we'll start that loading in. And if you have a estimate for the lens field of view, this would be the time to enter it now. And the geometric hierarchy tracking does require a field of view estimate from something, which can be from the pinning tool, we'll see, or from an onset measurement. So we'll go over into the geometric hierarchy tracking room. It's got its panel, and this is just a regular perspective view. And we'll run out here to frame 66, which shows the top of this can that we're going to track. And so the point of this is to get a nice, clear, clear, you know, easy to align sort of view here that shows the full depth of the object as much as possible. So we're going to go and create a mesh object and match it to the scene to start with. And I'm just going to control drag that handle a little bit to orient in the right direction. And I'm going to hit the backslash accelerator to go to wireframe view. So we're now going to go and use the pinning tools to adjust this mesh to match the can. We're going to tell it that we wanted to compute the field of view. And since we, we don't know the exact dimension and aspect ratio of the can, we want it to figure that out for us. But we don't want to check both the width and the depth, because then we could wind up with an oval can. Instead, we're going to tell it we want the height to change instead. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to start dragging some of these vertices from the mesh, with a little mesh snapping here. It's a control drag to snap to the vertex. And I'm just going to start with these top two and that's a middle mouse pan by the way and earlier it was the uh, right mouse to be able to zoom in and out initially. Once you're zoomed in a little bit, you can use the uh, scroll wheel as well. So the exact shape of the ovalness of the whole thing is determined by the field of view. So we're going to start putting in a few pins to set up that field of view. One thing to note is the little white cap is actually a little bit wider than the can itself. So I'm just going to cheat that in a little bit to match up to where the can itself is. Again, I can just zoom in and adjust the placement of these. And now we've got our initial alignment. And it's actually pretty pretty nice. The value I was going to point out to enter on the lens value was actually a 50 degree field of view. And we, we picked that up from doing this just from the pinning process. And I think that 50 degree, of field, 50 degree field of view value was actually a measured value from the camera. So we, we're doing pretty well in reproducing that in this example with a nice lens, nice camera, nice simple model, and so on. So we're actually done now with the pinning process. And we're ready to start setting up the uh, actual hierarchy part of it. Now here, it's going to be a very small hierarchy. We just need to have one node that's going to be moving around to 
do the you know, to carry around the tracking data. So I did a shift click on the mesh and it's now created a, a node there right at the center of the cylinder which is the right sort of thing for a free floating object like this. And you know I'm in orbit mode here and I'll right click to end that and we snap back to the original camera view which is kind of handy. So you know, with the various modes over here, they're used to create using various kinds of lasso or painting on the mesh. And we can actually put the, the individual object nodes right on the surface of the mesh if we want, if that makes sense. And that's typical for a secondary animation, sort of tracking application. But again, here we want to just stick with the center. So now we've got that set up, and our next phase is to go and tell it what, what joints we want to have free floating. And initially here, all the joints are locked up, our X, Y, Z, and three rotation angles. They're being locked to these spinner values, which isn't, isn't particularly useful in this case. We want to actually have the object flying around however it needs to go. Now again, if we created a hierarchy of objects, then we'd have some other things here, and then typically you would have some of the joints locked and some of them not. But here we've got now a free-flying object, and we are ready to start it flying. So we can just hit the play button, and it starts tracking through the shot. Remember, this is 4K. And we run through the shot to the end there. Now let's just go flip back to that initial key location. Now remember we did the initial key right in the middle of the shot, so we've tracked in the forward direction there, and now we need to track back in the other direction. So you want to turn the, the tracking direction here. This is the tracking direction for the geometric hierarchy tracking. This down here and the other copy up there, well not up there, but the, uh, the play buttons, you know, those are the play direction so you can play independent of the tracking direction. Tracking only actually happens when the tracking direction is the same as the playback. So I'm going to go and switch the tracking direction to be backwards. It goes and it switches the playback direction as well, just as a little handy hint. And now our play is ready to go in the other direction. So we can start playing in reverse and we're tracking through the shot in reverse. And now we've completed our initial track of the shot. So now we can flip over and take a look at it in 3D. Here are the different views. and scrub through the shot. And you notice there's a spot in the middle there where it gets a bit off track. And you know what's going on is that the lighting is changing pretty dramatically over the course of the shot. As it tilts upwards there, it gets a little bit off track. So the thing to do is we just back up a little bit to there, and now we can set a, a key on this that says, well, you know, now we've we changed the the levels here. We want to keep using this image as the reference image. So we can keep on tracking. Just step backwards. You saw again another little hop as the reverse happens. So again, we'll just flip to right before that happens and set another key. There's actually a keyboard accelerator there. If you saw, I could just hit K. And again, we can continue tracking backwards.
And you see now it's able to make its way through the shot much cleaner. So that's the kind of cleanup sort of activities that you can go through to improve the tracking of the geometric hierarchy tracker. And now we'll just flip over to the graph view as well. And just turn off some of these other channels. So here's some of the actual data. See that there's still a little spike here on some of them. We can use the glitch tool. Just take those out if we want. And that's probably still a pretty good thing to do. It's just going to clean it up a little bit. And we can actually look at the actual joint values also, or the joint velocities, which gives you, you know, another look at some of the velocities here. So you can isolate them and look for any individual particularly meaningful spikes that you want to clean up. So there are a variety of, of, of ways to adjust the tracking. You know, that's one of them. You can also go and animate these individual controls. And in some sequence of frames, if you need to hand animate for a bit, you can just lock those particular joints back up and supply your own keyframe animation using the graph editor there. So those controls are all animated. The, the key, key is animated, obviously. You can set it on for individual frames whenever you like. And actually, a number of the other controls, effect parent, is uh, animated as well. So that even in a complex hierarchy, you can have the overall geometry of what can move where and in what way can be changing over the length of the shot. And if some part of it happens to go completely off the edge of the screen, you can still jump in and supply some values as needed to make the whole thing hang together the right way. There are some additional controls here that let you select additional algorithmic options depending on the particular situation. If you have a lot of... Uh, you know, some more rapid motion, you may be able to use this careful option. The fine motion or the fine option is good when you have a, a smaller, you know, thinner sort of object that you want to track. Uh, spinny adds some additional processing to deal with things where an object is spinning in the plane of the image. Unbound is pretty much a technical control at this point. So all of these different options you know, wind up taking additional compute power. The effect apparent here is, is just for when you have hierarchies. But those additional options cost some additional processing time and are things that you can try in specific situations to address particular problems. So again, the whole thing is controllable. So, you know, here you've seen some pretty nice tracking speed. This is using a cylinder. Again, we'll point out, usually the mesh is going to be imported from, you know, with some more complicated thing, you know, a character model. And you can import it and then rig it and be able to have it tracked as well. And the speed of the geometric hierarchy tracking is such that it doesn't depend all that much on the complexity of the mesh. So you can go with much, much larger meshes and still have them tracked at a pretty good clip. So I hope you'll find that the Geometric Hierarchy Tracker is a really powerful tool to add to your toolkit. So enjoy. Thanks for watching.